We are back in Romans chapter 8, so if you have your Bible, uh, you can have it over to Romans chapter 8, and we're primarily going to try to look at verses 5 through 8 this morning, 5 through 8. While you're turning there, I want to ask you a question this morning. Do you ever fight battles that occur between your ears? All right. No. Think about that for a moment. I think, how many of you would say, I fight some battles up here sometimes? All right. Are you with me? I, I, uh, thank you. Scream it loud. There we go. We're back online. All right. All right. Back to the battle between here. Um, I, as I thought about the battle that, that goes on our mind, this morning we're going to talk about our thinking and, and what, what Paul's going to have to say about our thinking and how that fits in to the possible that God has placed over our life. And, and I really thought that, that this message needed a hashtag. And the computer's just not wanting to give you that today. So, we will try this one more time, and if we don't get it, we will go without. All right, we'll go without. So you have to write, there it is, all right. Not sure what's going on today. Our hashtag for today is Noron Wars, all right? You guys like hashtags? Who likes hashtags? All right, some of you don't, some of you hate hashtags, some of you love hashtags, but too bad, all right. We're having a hashtag for today. It's Neuron Wars. All right, there's battles that go on in our mind. And what I want us to explore this morning is that if we are going to live out the mission possible that God has placed over our lives, not only as we talked about yesterday, do we, do we need to know that, that God has placed over our life an incredible freedom when he pronounced no condemnation, right? You are free from the judgment of your sin because of the grace of Jesus Christ, because of his death and his resurrection on our behalf. Right? And so we have an incredible possible marked over our lives. Right? God has placed over your life an incredible possible. But what I realize is that if we are going to experience this new possible, this new life in Christ, right? that's the, the heart of the gospel is that, that there's a new way of living. Right, the message of Jesus, the message of the gospel is not, like I said yesterday, it's not just a go to heaven message. It's a message that there's a new way of living here and now that is possible because of what Jesus has done. The good news of Jesus is not just that we're forgiven. It's not just that we go to heaven. It's not just that we'll experience resurrection, right? And, and new bodies and a new heaven and a new earth. Right, something uh, that's been described as life after life after death, and that's incredible. But the gospel is an invitation to a whole new way of living, a whole new way of being human. Right, and and so that is the life that you are called to experience and to live through Christ. But what I've realized is that sometimes it's hard to live out who we are, and sometimes we fight some incredible battles in our life, in our thinking. Have you ever noticed that? That sometimes it's hard to live out who you are in Christ because you're fighting some battles up here. And so, Paul, as he writes this letter, he knew about this, right? And, and Paul knew, you know, he knew about what God could do. He knew about the transformation that God could make in a life. Have you ever thought about the radical transformation that, that God made in the life of Paul? Right? I mean, Paul, you know, he was a religious man, extremely religious, but he was very misguided in his religion and he did not accept Jesus as Messiah. In fact, he persecuted those who were followers of Jesus, right? We read about that in the book of Acts. He was present when Stephen was, was murdered. The Bible says that, that, that Paul, as he was then known as Saul, was wreaking havoc in the church. He would travel from place to place. He would find Christians. He would have them arrested and imprisoned, right? Saul was a religiously driven terrorist. But one day he encountered Jesus Christ and his life was radically changed by the gospel. And he went from a religiously driven nut, right? Persecuting people, participating in their murders, to becoming the greatest proclaimer of the gospel who's ever lived. He became a mission-fueled pastor, an apostle, author of scripture. And God marked over his life an incredible possible. 
And if we are going to live out our own possible, we have to fight this battle that goes on in our brains. Our brains are extremely powerful. Right? God made your brain as an extremely powerful and an extremely influential instrument. Right? There, there's just amazing, amazing ability up here. But because it's such a powerful thing, our thinking has a way of shaping our living. Uh, I read, uh, well, we'll get there in a moment. Let's, let's, let's look at, at, at verse, at verse uh, 5 in Romans. And we'll get there in a minute. But I want us to think about what Paul says here about how our thinking must be impacted by the gospel. Romans chapter 8 verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. So let's just soak in that for a moment. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds. Have you ever... I know most of us have you know, smartphones and all those sort of things now that automatically update the time, but how many of you still have clocks that you have to set? Maybe on your microwave or somewhere, right? All right, so we're, we're familiar with setting a clock, right? You, you have to set it to the correct time. You have to adjust it to, to bring it into correction. And so in a very similar way, Paul uses this idea. He says we need to set our minds, he says, for those who live according to the flesh, they set their minds on the things of the flesh. He's using flesh to describe our old life apart from Christ. But he says, those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. How we think is critical to how we live. How you think is critical to how you live. Right? Our thinking is so important. Uh, I read a, a study uh, that said 98 to 99 percent of our thoughts are habitual, right? That 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 almost all of our thoughts, like we, they just they, they run on autopilot, right? And so we have to program that thinking. I also read another study by the Cleveland Clinic, and whether this is true or not, I do not know. But they did a study about positive and negative thinking, and they discovered that on average, 80 percent of our thoughts are negative. Now that may not be true for you. You might be a very positive person. You might be you know, ahead on the percentages or maybe you're a negative person and, and, and you're maybe up in the 90%. But our thoughts are habitual and they're almost always negative. And based on how many thoughts we tend to think in a day, that if we think 80% negative, that could mean 48,000 negative thoughts in one day. All right? That's depressing. Are you with me? And so God wants to invade our thinking because our thinking will impact our living. We need to live out these what-if possibilities that God has given us. And we're never going to do that unless God shapes our thinking. Unless our thinking is shaped by the truth of who Jesus is and what he's done. Right? The truth of who Jesus is and what he's done for you must saturate and shape your thinking. Because your mind is so powerful. What we do is based on what we think. Romans 8 verse 6, as we read on in the text. Paul says, for to set the mind on the flesh is death. To set the mind on the flesh. So he says, if you set your mind back on your old way of living, right, apart from Christ, and if your thinking patterns aren't transformed by the gospel that saved you, he says that mindset is death. But to set the mind on the spirit right? The Spirit of God who lives in you, Jesus, through the Spirit living in you. He says, if you set the mind on the Spirit, it is life and peace. And so we have a choice that we have to make in our thinking. And that choice is to choose to set our minds, not on our old way of living or the thought patterns of this world, but to set our minds on the truth of who God is as he's revealed in his word, to saturate our minds with God's word and with God's truth, to transform the way that we think. Because how we think is so tied into how we live. And this incredible possible, this incredible life that God has marked over you. And, and listen, I'm not just saying that. It's not just some sort of fluff thing, right? The Bible says that God created you, what? Anew in Christ Jesus. For what? Good works, which God planned for you long ago. God has an incredible plan for your life. To use your life to bring Him glory. To serve His purposes in your generation. Right? And if you're going to live out that mission, that possible, that God's marked over your life, our minds have to be renewed. Look at how he said it as he wrote in Colossians chapter 3. 
Colossians chapter 3, he says, if then you've been raised with Christ, right? He's talking about your, your, your new life in Christ. He says, if you've been raised with Christ, your spiritual position because of your faith in, the, in Jesus Christ. He says, if that's true, then seek the things which are above. He says, live differently. Th- think about the things of God. He says, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. And then look at what he says. Set your minds. Set your minds on what? Things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have what? Say it. Well, my my, my screen went blank and I didn't know it. All right. If you have your Bible open to Colossians chapter 3, anybody know what he says when he says, for you have what? You have died. For you have died. That's that's a pretty extreme statement, isn't it? How many of you are like, I don't think I died, right? He's talking not about a physical reality, but about a spiritual reality that that when you came to faith in Jesus Christ, that you, as as Paul says in Galatians, you no longer live. It's now Christ who lives in you, right? You've received this brand new life in Christ and your life has been transformed and that transformation needs to also occur in our minds. So he says, set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Thoughts become... Well, before they become actions, what do our thoughts become? Words. words. All right, your thoughts become your words. What you think about eventually will come out of your mouth, and your words become your actions. And your actions become your habits. And your habits become your character. And your character becomes your destiny. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits, your character. And your character your destiny. So if we keep on thinking the same way, we're going to keep on getting the same results. And so God calls us to think differently. Romans uh, chapter 12 verse 2 says, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world. Right? That if you're in Christ, you're, you're called to live a different kind of life. This is not following the pattern of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. God wants to change your thinking. Then, he says, you will know God's will for you and you will know that it is good and pleasing and perfect. Now, let's go back to Romans chapter 8. Paul says in Romans, change the way you think. You'll become a new person. Now back in chapter 8, verse 7. He says, for the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. For it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. This is for the mindset. The mind that is set on the flesh is hostile. It's against God. For it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. But then he says, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So if if we go back to thinking the way we used to think, if we go back to thinking that's not transformed and renewed by the Spirit of God, by the power of God, right? we're never going to be able to live a life that pleases God. And really, that ought to be the aim, the goal of our life, right? I mean, that's what Paul said about his life. He says, he says I make it my aim to what? To please Him. My aim is to know Him, and my aim is to please Him, the one who loved me and gave Himself for me and died for me. And so our goal, our our mission in life is to live out the new life that God is giving to us through Jesus. Right? Remember yesterday we looked at John chapter 8. Right? This woman who was caught in the act of adultery and Jesus spoke over those powerful words, neither do I condemn you. But then what did he tell her? He says, go and what? Sin no more. And, And really what he was saying is, don't go back to your old way of living. Don't go back to your life of sin, your habits of sin, your patterns of sin. Go and live in the freedom that I've given you. Go and live in the, this grace that I'm giving you. And Jesus was able to give her that grace because soon after that encounter, he would go to a cross and he would pay the penalty for her sin and for your sin and for my sin to set her free so that she could live a new kind of life. And God has done that for you and for me. And if we're going to experience that, we've got to fight this battle that goes on our, in our minds. We have to set our minds on the truth of who God is and the truth of who we now are in Christ, right? We can get into some really bad thinking 
patterns. And Satan loves to attack our minds. He loves to attack our thinking. He would love for you to believe less about you than what God says about you, about who you are in Christ, about what Jesus has done for you. And when we think poorly, when we think badly, we'll live badly. God calls us to live lives in and through the power of His Spirit. And that begins not just in our doing, but in our thinking. And so I think of them as, as neuron wars. And listen, I fought a lot of these battles personally. All right? I, I have, you know, my mind is one of those minds that just does not shut off. Anybody have one of those? All right. Wow, that's most of us. All right. You know, and, and that can be a really good thing, but that can be a really bad thing, like when you're trying to sleep. You, are you with me? Yeah. All right. And have you ever noticed that many times that's where the attacks get louder? Right? When, when things get quiet, when life isn't busy, right? we can fight some incredible battles. And I want you to know, if you're fighting that battle and you're struggling in your thoughts, you're normal. You saw those hands go, like, like we're, we're in this together. But, but that does not mean that we don't fight the battle. Right? Because God has an incredible purpose for our life and He wants to shape our thinking. And so these neuron wars that are going on in our brain, this battle that's happening, it's worth fighting. Why? Because the gospel is an invitation to a new way of living, a new way of being. God has an incredible, incredible purpose for your life. Jesus died and rose and ascended to his Father and is coming back again. And in the meantime, he invites you to this new life. A life marked by his possible. And so I just want to ask you, if you're just really honest, I would say, I, I know, and you don't have to raise your hand, but just say, I, I know that, that I've got some really, I just call it stinking thinking, all right? I, I know I've got some thought patterns that are, that are not good. I, I'm, I'm not believing what God says about me, or, or maybe I'm letting my mind dwell on things that are not good, right? I, I'm consuming things in my mind. I'm dwelling on things that are not, not pleasing to God, that are sinful. I've got some, some thoughts that, that need to be transformed, you're not alone, but I want to give you three, three practical things that you can do to sort of fight this battle, and then we'll close. Number one, renew your mind daily. Renew your mind daily. It is essential that if we're going to win the battle for our mind, that we renew our minds. How do we do that? Well, the, the primary way that we do that is through the truth of God's Word. Nothing is more powerful to renew your mind, right, than the truth of God's Word. To read God's truth, to read His Word, to read what it says about God, to read what it says about you, and to allow the truth of God to saturate your mind. Because what we fill our minds with will transform the way we think. And when we transform the way we think will transform our lives. So renew your mind daily. Make a plan to spend time in God's Word every day. Even if it's just one verse that you say, I'm going to take that one verse and I'm going to think about that. I'm going to read it. I'm going to meditate on it. I'm going to absorb it into my soul. Listen to godly music, right? You know, music has such a, you know this, it has such a powerful way of permeating our minds. Right? Re renew your mind daily. Right? The battles that we fight in our mind, they have to be fought daily. Renew your mind. Spend time in God's Word. Let it shape your thinking. Number two, refresh your mind weekly. Refresh your mind weekly. What, is it, what does it mean to refresh your mind? Well, one of the things that we have to do with our thinking is that sometimes, sometimes we have to give our brains something new, something different, a break. And so I would encourage you to refresh your mind. Here's some practical things. Have an encouraging conversation with somebody that, that knows Christ and loves Jesus. A friend, a mentor, a parent, youth pastor, pastor, somebody. It, just somebody that you know who loves Jesus. Have a conversation with them that's, that's built on the truth of who God is. And let them speak truth to you and encourage you. Do something you enjoy. Right? You know, it's okay to do some things that you enjoy, Right? And you know what? One of the things that that does for us is that it allows our mind to be refreshed. Shut off the, the world once in a while. Turn off your phone once in a while. How many of you are enjoying the break? Anybody? All right. It's kind of nice, isn't it? It's kind of nice to not know what's going on, right? It's kind of nice to, to be in the bubble. It's kind of nice to not get any notifications, right? You enjoying that? All right. You can do that at home. Some of you are not enjoying that. Some of you are going through withdrawal. You know, you just randomly find yourself texting. It's true, isn't it? But you know what? You can give yourself little breaks. You can turn your phone off. The world will not stop, 
right? It'll be okay. Refresh your mind. Do things that... Ref- Listen, the battles that we face in our mind are real. They're tough. And if you'll refresh your mind, you are going to give yourself the ability to, to come back and to live as if what Jesus has done is true. That's, that's really what we're trying to get at. We're trying to, to live as if what Jesus has done for us, what he's said about us, what he's made us is true. Number three, rest your mind often. Rest your mind often. So renew daily, refresh weekly, rest often. What do I mean? There, there's times where the battles in our thinking just get so intense and so strong, right? And it can feel very overwhelming. And we can fight those battles very intensely. And when you are just overwhelmed, that you need to rest your mind. And how we rest our mind is by running to Jesus, right? Running to Jesus and saying, God, I need your help. I, I need your grace. My, my thinking, I, I am struggling. I, I'm struggling to thinking about negative thoughts about myself. I, I'm struggling. I, I, I am dwelling on my sin more than I'm dwelling on the righteousness that you've given me. I, I, I have got some sinful, sinful struggles. I've got some temptations that are going on in my mind and I'm battling them. God, I need your help. So run to Jesus and just rest in him. Rest in his incredible love for you. You know, sometimes you just have to stop and remember, God loves me, right? Not because I'm worthy or not because I'm good. God's love for you is not based on your performance. It's not based on how well you're doing in your walk with Him, how obedient you've been, right? God's love for you is based on His choice to love you and the grace that He's shown you. Listen, the Bible says that God loved you, what? Before you even knew who He was. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God loves you. His love for you is a choice. And he'll never, ever stop loving you. He has unending grace towards you. Right? There are no limits. There are no limits to God's grace. It's like the waves of the ocean that just keeps coming and coming and coming. And so you need to rest in that. And remind yourself of what God says about you. Have a great possible marked over your life. And what could happen? What could happen if we lived and thought as if, right? You know, yesterday we talked about if only regrets and what if possibilities, but we need to live as if what Jesus has done for us is true. We believe it, but we need to live as if it's true. And we need to think as if it's true. If you'll change the way that you think, you'll see a transformation in the way that you live. Paul says to set your mind. I know it's a struggle. I fight that struggle. I still fight that struggle. But it's a battle worth fighting because God has an incredible plan and purpose for your life. Let me pray for you this morning. Would you bow your heads? And just just in the quietness of this moment, before we rush off to a busy, eventful, exciting day, a day that you're going to grow and be challenged and, and have an amazing day. But before we... Before we rush off into that, just, just with your heads bowed in a moment of reflection, how many of you would just, just be honest enough to say, you know, that's, that's me today. I'm really fighting some battles in my thinking. I'm really struggling deeply, and, and I need God to, to help me. Would you just raise your hand so I could pray for you? Nobody's looking around. Just, just raise it up. All right, thank you so much for your courage. I just want to pray for you this morning. Know that you're not alone, right? Know, know that God's grace is for you. And that you can renew and refresh and rest your mind. And God will work and transform our thinking. Let let me pray for you. Father, I I thank you for the privilege that we've had to to gather together this morning. Father, I thank you for the the privilege to worship you. Uh, What what an amazing opportunity that we had to sing those great words that that Isaac Watts penned so, so many years ago. Father, I thank you for that rich truth and the ability that you gave us to praise you. Father, I thank you for the incredible, powerful brains that you've given us. And yet I know that that sometimes this powerful thing is not doing what we would like it to do. Father, I know sometimes we struggle in our thinking. And I know many, many have indicated that this morning. And Father, I just pray for them right now. I pray that, that they would have the power by your grace to believe about themselves what you have decreed over their lives. That they would believe 
and know in their, in their minds that you love them, that you gave your son up for them, that they are loved, that they are free, that they are yours. And Father, I pray that that thinking would begin to transform their living. Father, that they might be able to live lives that please you and honor you and glorify you and fulfill the purposes for which you saved them. Father, I thank you for your patience with us and your grace in our lives. Father, transform the way that we think that we might live out the possible that you've marked over our lives. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.